could make some noise this Woo! morning. Thank you, Lord. That was shocking, guys. If you believe that he is good, let's make some noise. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Maybe look to the person next to you and tell them it's good to see you again. 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 And then maybe try and touch about three people and tell them something great's about to happen. Something great's about to happen. Go ahead, tell them. Something great's about to happen. Something great's about to happen. Great's about to happen. Tell them you need this. You need this. You need this. Tell them you need this. You need this. You need this. You need this. Tap yourself with you too. And tell yourself, self, you need this. 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 Awesome stuff. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I asked you guys whether you believe God is good. And you made a noise. If you believe God is great, can you make some noise this morning? Woo! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. If you believe that he's, here's a nice word to describe him. If you believe that he is phenomenal, can you make some noise this morning? Woo! Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. So, yeah, welcome Thank to you. each and every single one of you. Thank you. I'm really hoping, which means... I have a confident expectation that you guys are very excited to be here this morning. Amen. There's a couple of mm, you guys are grunting at me this morning. Mm. <laughs> All right? But I'm really pumped to be here with you guys this morning. I am really excited to get started as well with what the Lord, I believe, wants to share with us here today. Amen. Because one thing I'm sure is that His Word never returns back void or empty. It actually always sets out and achieves everything it's supposed to achieve. All right? Everything it's supposed to achieve. So very exciting times that we find ourselves in. Uh, again, if you'd be so courteous, thank you, Lord, if you'd be so courteous to just turn to the person next to you and tell them, I'm glad that you are sitting next to me. Chuck, I'm glad I can at least look at you from, from a distance. All right. Awesome stuff. Welcome to our online familia. Yes, that's bien. Yeah, familia. Yeah. All right. Those of you in Facebook world, those of you in YouTube, on YouTube planet, and those of you, of course, in the world of TikTok. Welcome, 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 welcome. We are also hoping that at some point you would come and join us for a live session on a Sunday as well, and to go from being online to coming to join us live if you are in the Pretoria area, we are at the PDF Theatre on Sundays at 9 a.m. All right, so it'll be lovely to have you come and join us over there and uh, to see you also and get to meet you face to face. But in the meantime, what you can do is you can drop the little fire emoticon all right, right there in the comment section because I believe today is going to be a fiery time mm -hmm. in the presence of our King Jesus Christ because he's got fire in his eyes and he has defeated death. He is so great that he literally killed death. Amen. He killed death. I mean, that's just like on some next level stuff, right? He killed the death. He killed that. Right? So that, that's, that's the Lord that we serve. That is our Messiah. That is our King. And not only is he our King, but he's also a friend that sticks closer than a brother. So we are very excited this morning. With that being said, all right, again, my lovely wife looks like a 12 out of 10 model all the way, a little mix between, um, what's it, Brazil and uh, Puerto Rico, and uh, she's just a little mix going on. It's just absolutely beautiful. So, 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 so my love, it's so good to, to have you here as well this morning. And you know how encouraging it is, all right, to see your wife taking notes. It is extremely encouraging, and praise the Lord Jesus Christ for that. And uh, I'm excited to hear what those words oh. So, exciting times. If we can quickly, quick, if you see the look that I'm getting right now, my wife. Right, uh, anyway, anyway, it's going to be it's a, it's a great, great look. Not bad, if you're but that being said, if we can quickly close our eyes and bow our heads, I'm going to tilt my knees. Um, yeah, because I feel that's what I need to do. All right, so then we're going to pray. Thank you, Jesus. Abba Father, our beloved Father, our source, our sustainer, our way maker, our provider, our strength, our everything. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for this marvelous privilege of being able to be called 
church, which is your ecclesia, your called out ones, knowing that you called us to you for a time such as this. Thank you, Father God, that you are not angry at us, but are rather madly in love with us. And we thank you that we can get a revelation of that love that you have for us. A love that is not petty, a love that is not weak and, and, and so forth, but a love that is strong, that is courageous, that is powerful, that is gentle in the same breath, that is absolutely unconditional, and we thank you for that. Father, we ask you this morning for a spirit of wisdom and revelation, like Talboy mentioned earlier on, Father. We ask you for that, Lord God, that we can have that wisdom and revelation to simply get to know you better. Because to know you is to have true life, eternal life, both eternal as well as abundance. Thank you, Jesus Christ, for abundance. Thank you, Lord, for that. Father, we ask you this morning that you would open up the eyes of our hearts to know this hope that you have called us into, into God. Thank you for that. Thank you that it is you, my Lord, that has made us worthy of this glorious inheritance through your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for your precious blood that gives us victory over every circumstance, mm. over every situation, over every trial, over every tribulation, because we know that we have a covenant with you that you will never break. And we thank you for that. Papa, I ask you this morning that you would reveal to us your exceedingly great power that is available for every single one of us who believe. I ask you this morning, Father, fill us with your spirit here today until we overflow for the nations in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray, Father, for your wisdom and your help to communicate your message with absolute clarity and precision. precision. Father, I pray that it may penetrate deep, Lord. That it will touch the hearts and minds and souls of your people, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. And we speak to every soul and we thank you that every soul be impacted, every soul be inspired, every soul be transformed to the glory of the Lord. That every soul shall arise and shine, for their light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon them. And we thank you for this. We love you, Lord. We bless you. And we thank you so much. Also, thank you for shield, Lord God, and the 48-hour protection under my armpits. We thank you for this. We love you, and we bless you. And we dedicate this into your hands. In Jesus' name. Amen. And we all say amen and amen. amen. Can we give God one more message? So, I quickly want to hear from you guys how well you know the people here in the congregation. Who does this? Oh, yes. Can we give him a massive round of applause for this morning? Absolutely powerful, stuff. He's trampling on the stone. He's so big here, Jesus, my God. He's trampling down. He's going higher and higher. Thank you, Jesus. Awesome, yeah. powerful, powerful yeah. stuff this morning. Yeah. Sorry, but I had to just kind of go yeah. through there for a bit. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool, but um, yeah. awesome, really powerful. That Abraham Isaac, go, that was so powerful for me. Abraham Isaac going up one way, yeah, and here's Ram coming up the courier service, but the Ram <laughs> coming up the other way. Thank you, Jesus. God is busy preparing it, right? Yeah. You don't necessarily see it, but therefore we walk by faith that's and not awesome. by sight. Like we shared before, by God's grace, sometimes, or not sometimes, a lot of the times, one of our greatest enemies towards the vision that God has given unto towards us is our sight. Right? Because we look at the eyes and like, yeah, that situation looks real. That problem looks real. The trial looks real. The tribulation looks real. I don't know how you pronounce it real like this, but it looks real. It looks real. And faith is not denying the problem. Faith is just you trusting in God so that the problem no longer has influence over your life. Amen. Okay, Amen. so a couple of thoughts before we head into the PowerPoint, which is about 50 odd slides for the year. No, not so many slides. 
but there's a couple of slides over there. But before we get into those, I'd love to share a couple of ideas and some thoughts with you. What's fascinating is that the world is full of ideas. Right now you are sitting on an idea. The chair. It was an idea. The cushion was an idea. Mamaline's earrings were ideas. I'm very busy flapping. So those were ideas. Those pains that you are taking notes with were ideas. All right? You know, you know what was another idea? You see that when you look at your, your shoelaces? This part of the shoelace, that was an idea for them to, to make it like that. There was an idea in someone's head. Right? It was an idea. So, so the world is full of ideas. Jesus Christ is God the Father's expressed idea. John chapter 1, verse 1, says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Right? He's God's expressed idea. He's the visible representation of the invisible God, according to Colossians. It's God's idea. All right, to come and send His only begotten Son so that we might be saved. And the word saved is absolutely loaded over there. It means to be set free, to be made whole, to be healed, and to be saved, of course, too. All right, so here's a couple of ideas which hopefully will get us all to think a little bit this morning. Because Jesus is definitely one who makes us think. Right? One thing that I love about a crisis is that a crisis influences your perspective and causes you to begin to think again. Potentially reevaluate again, to reassess again. All right. So here's a couple of ideas that I'd love to share with you this morning, and this is the first one over here, and that is this: a distracted genius will always be worse off compared to a focused fool. Yeah. Can you repeat that one? A distracted genius will always be worse off. Compared to a focused fool. So what's the point? <laughs> Here's the point. Here's the point. Here's the point. Here's the point. The one ties into the next. Here's the point. Stop what stops you from fulfilling the dream God has given you. Stop. Stop what stops you from fulfilling the dream that God has given unto you. Stop. All right. Leading to the next point over here, which is this. Whatever you model in life, you become. This is why the father plays such an extraordinary role within a family. Because whatever a child models, they become. Whatever we as children of God, whatever we model, we become. Hence, our perfect Father said these words to us through the Apostle Paul, right? In Ephesians chapter 5, he said, Therefore, be ye imitators of God as dearly loved children. Because whatever we imitate, whatever we model after in life, we become. Therefore, we are instructed again through the second wisest man to have ever walked the planet. His name is King Solomon. He was not the wisest because Jesus was on the earth and all wisdom dwelt in Christ, right? And he said these words, walk with the wise. And then what happens? When you walk with the wise, you become like the wise. But a companion of fools suffers harm. Next thought over here. Love everybody, but check those closest to you. Because whatever you model, you become. Whatever you model, you become. You guys still all right? Yes. Okay. Again, the key to great growth moving forward is grace which leads to focus. Grace which leads to focus. Paul again says, set your heart and mind on things above where Christ is. 
have you guys noticed in today's day and age, one of the biggest areas of attack that people are under is the area of their attention. Mm. I mean, everything gunning for your attention. The notifications on your phone, being pulled over the side of the year, and so forth. Everything is gunning for your attention, which proves how valuable your attention actually is. Right? Isn't it strange? It's easier to sit in a two and a half hour movie than it is to maybe try and stay awake in an hour and a half session at church. Yeah. I mean, glued to the screen, but are you checking all the. You, 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 you. <laughs> but an hour and a half session, hey, it can be vigorous at times. You start seeing people maybe like 40 minutes, it's not pulling some amps. You see the next, hey, yeah, the next stop doing it. Stop doing it. Stop doing it. Stop doing that. Because our biggest area of, 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 of well, one of the biggest areas that are under attack in people's lives is their attention. I mean, one of the biggest issues that the youth are, are, are dealing with in today's day and age is the whole thing ADHD, right? The attention deficit disorder. And I, and I tend to look at that a lot differently because for the way I see it is it's just a, a, differ a differentiation of uh, priorities. Right? Just a priority shift. I mean, someone who, for example, if, if someone enjoys playing video games, they don't have ADHD. Yeah. They can play the game blue for six hours, forget about that it was day today. Mm -hmm. But then at school they say, no, they've got ADHD. No, they've got a different priority. <laughs> right? Yeah. If you enjoy, like, what you, if you, someone, a soccer player who enjoys playing soccer, doesn't have ADHD on, on the field. They might have in the classroom, but not on the soccer field, right? Soccer field, they are fully focused. <laughs> it's a priority to them to play ball, for them to play video games, for them to be on the... That is their priority. Which means that when your priority shifts, your attention shifts. Okay, so again, the key to great growth is grace. The grace that God gives, my friend, automatically makes you more focused as an individual. If you truly encounter the grace of God, you naturally become more focused as an individual. Why? Because you encounter the blooming real thing. So your focus naturally increases. Like we shared before, some time ago, our greatest challenge in life is not our focus or our discipline or our devotion or our, um, our commitment. No, those are all great ideals and all you know, massive pillars to success in life and so forth. But that's not our biggest challenge. We've made them our biggest challenge, but our biggest challenge is simply believing the good news. Because when you believe the good news, when you believe the goodness of the Father, you naturally become more focused. Case in point, should I receive today, let's say I have my phone in my pocket, and let's say I receive today uh, a proof of payment from F&B, say, do, 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 two billion rand is coming to your account. Right? We say, hallelujah, amen, thank you, Jesus. Right, it's great. So let's say that comes in. Look, my praise automatically went up. Because why? I received good news. Do you see that? No one had to force me to be like, hallelujah. No one had to force me to say, amen. It naturally happened. It was a response to the good news. Why? Because I encountered good news. Then what's going to happen? Laser light focus on what? Telling wifey. <laughs> I'm going to owe it. Why? Because I believe it to be good news. I'm going to then be committed to telling her the good news. I'm going to be disciplined to make my way to her to tell her the good news. So the good news leads to all these other actions we are so worried about. Like focus and commitment and I need to be more devoted to the Lord. What about just receiving, like I mentioned this morning, like about, that was such a powerful analogy. Sometimes for us as individuals, yet the, our toughest thing to do is to receive yeah. at times. Now, I know there's some people that really they end up, you know, like, I'm oh, just a queen male, right? I understand that part. But the, then there's the flip side of the point of those that just struggle to, to receive. Myself being one of them at times. Because that's kind of how we were brought up, right? Being, you got to be dependent, right? Be dependent. But the kingdom, it's about interdependence. Mm -hmm. Co-laboring with the Lord. 
I think it's also one of the primary reasons why Jesus said it is hard for the rich, not that it's impossible, but it's hard for the rich to enter into the kingdom. It doesn't mean that if you have got money that you're evil or something, that's not the case. But it's hard for them to enter into the kingdom. Why? Because they, sometimes with the rich, they become so self-sufficient in and of themselves. Mm. And now yet Jesus says, no, ask, and then you will receive. It's about receiving this abundant provision of grace first, making Him Lord over your life, and then from there, everything else begins to increase moving forward. Mm. Are we still together? Yeah. Okay. So again, the key to great growth is a grace which leads to focus. Therefore, neglect the distractions and just do the basics. <coughs> I remember years ago a statement that we that we got was um, when you learn to do the basics brilliantly you'll become everything but basic. Yeah. Okay. Next point over here, and I think it's key for us to actually describe what we mean by success here. Everybody, everybody, everybody on the planet desires success. Regardless of how much they have suppressed it or how much it has been oppressed from them. Everybody desires success. Even the drug dealer desires to be a successful drug dealer. Even those that have been suppressed within life that have put that desire so far down. Everybody <coughs> desires success. Now what is success? Success is ultimately but the fulfillment of purpose. to a very, very interesting point. Last week we shared about time. Do you guys remember that? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Last week we shared about time. Mm -hmm. Here's something about time. Time is but a piece of eternity. Watch this. This is very important. Watch this now. Time is but a piece of eternity. So here's eternity, big pie over here, the pie of eternity. And here's a little piece, which is time. And that piece could be different for all of us. It could be 80 years, it could be 70, 120, it could be 3, it could be 2, whatever. But God, ooh, God lives in eternity and He placed us into time. Yeah. Okay, so watch this now. This is important. Time equals, I'll put it a bit differently, time equals a small piece of forever. Okay, now watch this. Very, let's get me. And we were placed in time for a purpose. So what's the point? We were taken from forever, from eternity, put into time for a purpose. Do you see the picture of that? That is massive. Mm -hmm. So we were taken out of eternity, placed into the little piece which is called time, and we are there for, for a purpose. An intent from our Father to fulfill in that time. Okay. Hence why we shared with you that we need to stop what stops us from fulfilling what we are called to fulfill in that time. Like we read last week, Ephesians chapter 5, making the most of every single opportunity. Why? Because the days are evil. Yeah. What sound advice? Do not live as unwise, but as wise. Know what the Lord's will is. Enjoying the fruits there. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, so I want to talk to you about the title of the message today. I'm, I'm hoping that you guys are glad that we've moved on from um, living an exceptional life of the glory of one part four. So this is a new title for you today. It's here, it's called, the, the title of the message is Personal, Local, Global. That's the title. Nothing, nothing too fancy, but that's, that's the title. If you want to jot down a little title there in your notebooks or in your head, that's the title. Personal, Local, and Global. So I felt led that we need to just quickly again just very, very quickly, go over the reason of, you know, Tom was spoken about something very interesting this morning, about the game that, that vision and, and dreams of. So, so it's amazing how the Spirit of God works, because this week, uh, today, uh, when we said I was supposed to share, and now you ended up sharing, and it tied so marvelously into with what we wanted to share mm -hmm. <laughs> as well. How amazing is God? Eh? So, it was, I think I thought it would be a good idea for us to share again the reason why we, as a congregation, and as a ministry, why we, we gather together? Yeah. And, and, and for, for what reason do we, do we gather together? And, and what's kind of like the, the way forward? So here's it over here, our why and our what, all right? 
our why, our reason, our purpose for, for being a congregation, for, for being a church, is over here. A voice after God's heart. To be a voice after God's heart, who number one, inspires billions. Because why? There's billions of people on the planet, and why? God doesn't want anyone to perish. Who impacts billions. And that then, that's the, that's, that's the result. The result of that is we influence culture. And as we influence culture, what do we see? We see transformation take place in the nation, in the country. And then we can be an example, all right? I'm trying to find that word now, Lord. What's that word? I'm trying to be that model to the rest of the world of what it looks like when a nation is surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? And then that also ultimately transforms the world. So, essentially, you want to impact locally in order to influence globally. You want to impact locally in order to influence globally. You want to reach locally in order to impact globally. Moving forward. And, and, and what's our what's our what? What's the mission? This is the why, this is the reason why we exist. Okay? Well, what's our mission? And we do this by the grace of God through our mission of empowering people to do what? Number one, to recognize their true identity. Number two, to discover their purpose. And number three, to release them into their destiny. So we fulfill this through empowering them to recognize who they are, why they're here, and where they're busy heading to. To giving power back to the people. God's power. And we do that through reconnecting people back to God's perspective. God's way of doing life through Christ. Okay? This is the reason why we are here and what we are busy doing. It's because of this. This can be expressed in so many different ways. It can be expressed through books, through t-shirts, through speaking, through soccer, through teaching, through media, through sport, through entertainment, through business, through medicine, through government, politics. It can be expressed in so many different ways, but this is the crux of it. Jesus said to go into the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that He has taught us, for lo and behold, He's forever with us. So that personal revival that takes place within our hearts, within our lives, should then result in there being a local revival around us wherever we go. Which would then result, as that begins to compound like this over time, it becomes a global revival that is busy taking place. Do you see the picture? So part of, for us, in order for us to fulfill this by the grace of God, there's a couple of areas that we need to focus on, which is namely number one, leadership. Because it cannot move forward if people are not empowered. Okay. So here's a thought to maybe jot down as well, which is this. A group of individuals who are focused on the right things is a group that can transform the world. A group of individuals who are focused on the right things is a group that can transform the world. That means that the opposite is also true. A group that is focused on the wrong things is a group that can infect the world. Yeah. Right? Sometimes it's fascinating. Like we make, we, sometimes we make more, more noise, make more of a sound in the nightclub than we do when we're praising God. People, why did I I know because I was there. Proud of their drunkenness. <laughs> Proud of their drunken. Uh, that was me. Now Jesus has saved my life and praise God for that. Yet we've got to make a noise for the king here because we know that this is the thing that sets free. This is the real thing. You know, truth is a very fascinating thing. thing. Truth is so, so beautiful. Truth is so powerful. Right? <laughs> People can still mock the truth, but it will not <laughs> take the truth away from being the truth. People can mock the truth. People can spit on the truth. But as I stop the truth from being the truth, yeah. the truth is the truth. People can step on the truth. I don't want this truth and put it in policies and put it in the legislation and so forth. No, 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 no. Truth is still truth and we will bow down to the truth. All right? 
you know, bow down to the truth. If you look at, uh, I've got a picture of Barcelona here at the back, <laughs> soccer team, all right? Barcelona were, you know, for a very, very long time, much club, more than a club, for a very, very long time, they were, they were thinking about the soccer team, however. I know there's some volleyball happening. But the soccer team ain't thinking about playing volleyball, they're thinking about doing what? Playing soccer. <laughs> You know, today there's a lot of, a lot of uh, interesting things that are taking place today. If you go on YouTube, I'm pretty sure maybe the youth that have seen this. There are so many countless videos talking about your side hustle. Yeah. Have you guys, have you, have you guys seen those see, side hustles like make, make extra $100 a month? Make extra, this is side hustle, side hustle, side hustle. Now imagine you've got 14 different side hustles, you're only focused on one. You've got 14 different things. Now you're running here, 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 you're running here. What would happen if you had to just focus on one? Yeah. And get that to gain some momentum moving forward. What happens if you just had to focus on God, God's power to us? We're just using what He's given us towards us in order to expand His kingdom. <laughs> Jesus lived a very simplified life. He said, I only say what I hear the Father say, and I do only what I see the Father do. Wow, what a simplified way to live your life. One, this verse always fascinated me. 1 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32, in the Old Testament, it said, there was a tribe called the sons of Issachar. Right? <laughs> now from Issachar, men, look at this, look how the Bible describes the sons of Issachar, how they describe this tribe here. Men who understood the times and knew what Israel should do. Yet, yeah, what a great... Can you imagine having this description of your life? <laughs> oh, wow. The name Moses understood the times. <laughs> and she knew what we needed to do. Nico understood the times. And therefore knew what to do. Wow. And the amazing thing is we have a relationship with the Creator of everything. So he can actually assist us and help us and empower us in order to understand the times so that we might know what to do right now. Here's a thought regarding patience. If you eat the corn too soon, you miss out on the rest of the grain. I'll put it to you a bit differently. If you eat the seed, you eat the entire forest. Which implies that also, if you don't understand the time, what will you end up doing? You'll end up eating the seed. Or you'll end up eating the grain. But it's not time for the grain yet to be harvested. For the corn to be harvested. It's not time yet. Make sense? Or yeah. vice versa. It all depends upon, do we understand the times? So, we, so that we might know what we should do moving forward. Case in point, Joseph knew the times. Jesus was definitely knew the times. And imagine, if Jesus knew the times, and we're walking with him, right? We are students, he's our master. And we're walking with him. And the word says, the same spirit that rose Jesus from the grave now lives inside of us. So we have his spirit within us. Surely then, by the grace of God, if we had to make the request, God help us to understand the times, so we might know what to do. Do you not think that he'll answer? There's something that God has allocated for November. There's something that is allocated for November. Therefore, seize the day. Seize the month. Remember, he made known the end from the beginning. You were born to start what God already finished. There's some things that he had ordained for November 2022. On the 6th of November that he ordained. And I want that. I desire that. So... I think one of the keys to us understanding the times, as well as knowing what we should do, is that we need to take a quick look at purpose, and just the purpose of a couple of things quickly here. Namely, number one, the purpose of being blessed. Okay? Again, whenever you do not understand the purpose of something, you are bound to either abuse it, which is to abnormally use it, all right, or not use it at all. So this is about getting some understanding regarding the purpose of being blessed. Okay? The purpose of being blessed is not so that we can look down on others. The purpose of us being blessed is so that we can be a blessing to others. Genesis chapter 12, verses 2 and 3. 
God says to Abraham, makes the promise, which is the same promise which is available to every single one of us because of our faith in Christ Jesus. He said, I will make you into a great nation. So you can post about how great you are on Instagram. No, it didn't say that. Okay? So that you can boast about how great... No, it's not about that. It's so that we can be a blessing unto the nations. To your family, to your community, to the city, to the country, to the continent, and so forth. Okay? So the purpose of being blessed... What is it to be blessed? The word blessed means to be endued with power for success, prosperity, longevity, fruitfulness, and happiness. Okay, so the purpose of being blessed is so that you can be a blessing unto towards others. This is a very important statement as well over here. People mistaken God's blessing with materialism. God's blessing of your life is not just showcased through your material things that you possess. Yeah. It's way deeper. It's godliness with contentment, which is great gain. So that when the other things come, you realize what is the purpose of these other things. Not to give you your identity. You have your identity. Through the Father giving you an identity through Christ. You have your identity. So now you realize the purpose of these things is even also to be a blessing. To your family, even in your own life, to be blessed by it and through it. But also to be a blessing unto towards others. The purpose of success. What is the purpose of success? The purpose of success is to you. To, the purpose of success is for you not to boast about your success. It's for you to go out and make others successful now. What's the point if you're the only one at the top of the mountain? That's a lonely mountain. So the purpose of success is so that you can go out and empower others to also be successful moving forward. Those that are willing on. The purpose of empowerment, again, to tie into the success one. The purpose of empowerment is to do what? Is to empower others. That's the purpose of it. Not to hold the power off for yourself, but to empower others. Jesus said something so fascinating about legacy. He said, unless I go, the Holy Spirit cannot come. And you will do even greater works than what I have done. Ooh. Say again. That's my It's incredible. Can you imagine the risk take of God is? He says to his people, you will do even greater works than what I've done. Why? Because I am putting my spirit inside of you. I am empowering you to continue the work, son. To continue the work, man. And that work, by the way, is not like a heavy burden. That's not, that's not the work, the purpose of what he's called you to perform. The thing of being a voice or whatever God is called to do in your different area of industry. And work and so forth. Okay. Who here is number one? The purpose of prosperity. The purpose of prosperity. Make sure. Here's something you want to consider. Just, just to consider. The Bible speaks of and says that the love of money is the root of all evil. Not money. The love of money is the root of all evil. Okay? And as we are on the subject of prosperity over here, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Financial independence is a worthy goal if you understand the purpose of prosperity. Jesus, I can feel that's a bit of a tense one. It is a worthy goal if you understand the purpose of prosperity. Can I, can I submit something to you today? Heaven. Yes, heaven. Heaven is a wealthy place. When you understand the purpose of prosperity, you again can see money for what it is. Not something to run away from or thinking that it's evil. No. It is as a tool, but in your hand, in order to advance the mission and the purpose and the assignment moving forward. That's what it is. It's not your identity. So the purpose of prosperity is what? 
to empower others to prosper too, moving forward. That's the purpose of it. Yes, you get your nice things so and forth, but I can tell you right now, you can have the nice things but still have no fulfillment whatsoever. Nothing wrong with the nice things. You think, well, I would like to have some nice things. Nothing wrong with them, but I'm telling you right now, the fulfillment that you are looking for is not found in the things. <laughs> it's found in the impact that you make in the lives of others moving forward. I mean, on Sunday, sent us something yesterday. I thought that for me was so encouraging. Sent us a little picture yesterday of one of the papers that she was busy marking at school. And uh, was it for English, I'm assuming? For English. And on this paper, this chap over here, in his English paper, he used one of the lines that God had given us in one of the videos that he saw in the class. You know how fulfilling it is to see that? You know what we shared before, like uh, uh, motivation without organization leads to frustration. He wrote that in his paper. Oh, sweet. See, oh, Jesus. You know how fulfilling that is? You, know, you look at that like, oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> that's, good. that's so fulfilling. Nothing wrong with the nice car. I mean, that's great and so forth. But I can tell you, it won't give you the fulfillment that your soul desires and longs for. The purpose of being prosperous is so we can prosper others at the end of the day. Not just throw money at them, but give them the skills that they might do it too, moving forward. The purpose, well, here's a big one. The purpose of education is once you, the right education, is once you've been educated, is to do what? To keep it all for yourself? No, to educate others. To share the revelations you've got, to share that with other people. Which we hope and trust will lead to empowerment for them moving forward. Can you imagine the ripple effect? I mean, there's some stuff today, this is, I'm not trying to gun the, the, the system or anything, but like, there's some stuff that I'm learning today. Thank you, Jesus. If we could teach the youngins the stuff that we're learning today at school level, we can see this country in a completely different place in 40 years' time. Mm -hmm. Why withhold information? Why withhold that from someone? If you know, listen, this is a golden nugget, a golden piece, and you can see the chat is like, well, why withhold? Yeah. And save the person 10 years. 10 years of their life. This is why mentorship for the older generation is such a vital role for, for, for you to play. To transfer the knowledge onto the younger people. So we can see the whole thing transformed moving forward. But now what's happening is, and I'm saying this respectfully to us, I think I qualify also slightly at least for the older generation. I don't know if the older old one, but you know, the, the 30 year olds. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, the older generation. But for the ones about all, the, the older generation, it's like as if, not all of them, but some of them, it's like they are getting scared that the younger ones are going to take their position so they will hold knowledge from them yeah. because they themselves are insecure. And then they're not willing to transfer the information to the younger generation, which makes them, number one, frustrated, number two, angry, and then we wonder what's happening with the youth. Because the ones here are busy withholding the information from the ones in the vital pieces. This kind of service level stuff we're still okay with. But the deep dive. Or stuff that can, did you know that this, this can save this young chap over here 10 years of their life, 20 years of their life? For all, the, for all the, the young people inside the room here today, which is everyone under the age of 100, here, here's, a, here's a quick thought. Simply ask those who are or have done what you are or want to do successfully. All right? Go, try, try find a model of someone who is doing or has done what you want to do and who has done it successfully. Try find that model and go ask them questions. Purposeful question. I've seen it in my own life. But sometimes I try and figure this stuff out by myself and what the blah, blah, blah. I get exposed to one beautiful, stunning conversation. It's like, yeah, here's the answer. And I go, oh, no, I oh, know you're still trying to you know, dig my. No, here's the answer. Here's a perfect model of someone, when I say perfect, I say it's likely to be, all of us are busy growing, 
but he has a model of someone who is doing or has done what I want to do, and they've done it successfully to the glory of God. Why well, don't just ask them what were some things that you learned in your journey in doing this? Save yourself years. Why? Because both success and failure leave tips and clues. The purpose of being equipped is so that, again, we can equip others. What a worthy cause. The purpose of inspiration, well, let, me, let me put it a bit differently, the purpose of getting a goosebump is so that you can go out into the world and take that revival that you just experienced and take it out into the world and shine. Not to put the light underneath the table, but to shine. And best believe him. This is the thing. When Jesus says, like, let your light shine before others, and let us see your good deeds and give glory to your Father in heaven. He says that, right? Do you please note that when you shine in a world that is insecure, you will get persecuted. That's bound to happen. It's going to happen. Okay? But that doesn't mean that you will stop shining. Shine. The purpose of encouragement, again, is to encourage Others. <laughs> and then the last one, I think there should be 10 here. Yeah. The purpose of being enhanced is to, I'll go quickly now, is to enhance others moving forward. You get enhanced, so, what, so, what, so you can enhance others as well. You can pay it forward to someone else mm-hmm. at the end of the day. Okay? And then lastly, oh, there's a big one. The purpose of forgiveness. What's the purpose of forgiveness? Well, partly, one part of the purpose of forgiveness, when you forgive, all right, those that have hurt you, is that, is it, this is why forgiveness is so powerful, my friends. Forgiveness is so powerful, and why God encourages us to forgive, is because, listen, when you forgive, you what, you what you are doing is, by the grace of the living God, the power that you have given to somebody else's mistake of what they did to you, you remove that power from your life when you forgive. Which means that that power no longer controls you. You're no longer under the influence of somebody else's mistake. Therefore, forgive. Bless you. Does that last one make sense of me? Because that's very, very important. Here's what they did was wrong. Bless you. Here's what they did was bad. Absolutely. But yet, choose to forgive because when you forgive, you remove that power, that influence of somebody else's mistake over your life. Yeah. You know for how long in my life I've tried to control kind of like what others might potentially think about me. But I realize, but I realize that yeah, people are going to think what they're going to think. <laughs> I'm driving myself nuts trying to get, you know, trying to, you know, get someone else to think a certain type of way about me. Some people, you know, they want to think whatever they want to think. And that's not my duty. My duty is to, by God's grace, set the standard. That's my duty. And to communicate God's status to the world. That's my duty. Right? However someone else responds towards that and what they think about me, that, that's, that's on them. That's not for me. Okay, so here's a, here's a big list of getting understanding of purpose. I'm going to quickly go through this one over here again of some things that all of us have in common. Again, just to make sure we're all on common ground here. Which is, number one, we've got problems, challenges, and struggles in common. All of us. Again, I want to make the statement here today, which is vitally important for all of us here. Sometimes the problem is not the problem, it's the way that you see the problem that's the problem. Yeah. Sometimes it's not the problem that's the problem. The problem is the way you see and view and observe the problem that is the problem. Because many people, when they look at particular problems and particular challenges, they're not viewing it from, from God's perspective, but they are viewing it from a place of past traumatic experience. Which leads to a very important thought. Your past is not more important than your future. Because why? It's in the past. Alright? The next thing one of us have in common are talents. Oh, my God, this is past week we were able to share with a couple of groups. None of us came to this earth empty. Meaning all of us came to this earth with something to give to our generation or generations to come. 
we have come with something to give. All of us came to this earth not empty, but you must die empty. Meaning that you have deposited everything that God put inside. You deposited that onto the earth for the benefit of others. I remember years ago, I encourage you guys to go listen to it too. Years ago, I came across a sermon by Dr. Miles Monroe called Die Empty. Beautiful, stunning. It's a sermon that God has used tremendously within my life. And he uses the premise of the wealthiest place on the earth is not the diamond mines and the gold mines and all the oil mines. That's not the wealthiest place. The wealthiest place on the planet is the graveyard. Because there were movies that were never produced. There were companies that were never established. There were songs that, were, that had never been sung. There were books that were never written. There was artwork that was never produced. There were non-profits that never got established. All because they didn't do what they were supposed to do. So what's the key? We came to earth, not empty, but die empty. Paul said it like this. Jesus said it like this. It's not Jesus. Jesus said, it is finished. What? The mission complete. Paul said, I've run the race. I ran it. I finished my race. I kept the course. I kept the faith. He knew. He released it onto the earth. What needed to be released. It was time to go be with the king. His time, in time, was finished. Now he got, he's been transferred into eternity. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know about Jesus, but I'm excited for God to be doing that. You know? Something all of us have in common is purpose or dreams. All of us have got that in common. Because we come from God and everything He does is with a purpose. Even the very, like I got some, oh, please forgive me, my wife might look at me now also strange, but I got some very long nose hairs. And by the way, every one of those nose hairs, they serve a purpose. They keep the dust from going to sit on a brain. They serve a purpose. Everything God designs with a purpose. Not, though it looks beautiful, it's all for a purpose. Which leads to the woman we can talk to the woman. Woman, woman, woe woman. You are not just on this earth to look beautiful. You have a purpose. You have a meaning. You have significance attached to your life and value attached to your life. Something all of us have in common is a destiny, meaning what? We're all heading somewhere. Every one of us. I heard a cool definition of one time that a guy used on a, on a video and he said, um, how can God send people to hell and whatnot? He said, well, we're already on our way to hell. Jesus is the lifeboat into the promised land. What a description. For all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, we all need salvation. Every single one of us. And salvation is found in one name and one name alone. The name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Some people have said, common are decisions to make. Decisions to make. Here's a couple of key ones. Number one, um, deciding who you will follow is very important. Number two, deciding what you will worship is very important. There's some folks today that you can find them in a church building, but they don't worship God. So deciding who you will worship, <coughs> very important. <laughs> That's all alright? Yes. Awesome. And then number number three, deciding who you will walk with is very important. This is a vital decision. And by the way, not deciding is also a decision. Indecision is a decision because you decided not to decide. Something all of us have in common are ideas. We've spoken about that briefly. A poor idea that has been executed is way better off than a great idea that never has been. Yeah. That's what Thomas spoke about, that belief and that faith, right? Like, faith is executing, going, faith is an action. Mm. Is you execute on what you claim that you believe. Yeah. That's why I believe that one of the greatest acts of faith is actually your plan. Because <laughs> you believe that what God has spoken is actually true. So now you still have a plan with the moving forward. And when things get adjusted and so forth, you know that He's still giving you a purpose. The plans are, well, the plans can be adjusted, 
But at least you're sitting with him and writing down a couple of things, taking the vision from here, putting it on a piece of paper. You believe that it's true. Some things all of us have in common. Uh, opportunities and moments. All of us, I mean, right now we're having a moment together. Uh, right? All of us are having a moment now together. All of us have that in common. All of us have got access. Why? But I don't know. I don't have connections. I don't know. I come from a uh, poor family. No, no connections. No network and whatsoever. Blah, 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 blah. That's not the truth because you've got access to the Father. And He's the incredible connector. If you walk with Him, you'll be shocked as to where you might end up at. Some things all of us have in common is change. Change is inevitable, so we might as well embrace it. And then lastly, time again is something all of us have in common, right? Time is something all of us have in common. So, there's some more things to keep in children, some more thoughts to children. Never allow what was or what is to keep you from what can be. Never allow what was or what is keep you from what can be moving forward. Remember, sight equals what is. Vision equals what can be moving forward. Ah, oh, thank you, Jesus. I thought I could really chat to you guys about the Liverpool attitude here. Yeah, this yeah. This morning. So, so my wife got me a lack of present the other day, and it had, and it had like the, the Liverpool uh, song on it. You'll never walk alone. Uh, and, I, and I'm a Liverpool fan, and I never, and I still have trying to get you guys to support Liverpool or whatnot. It's just, <laughs> this is a very, very interesting song. When I went through the whole song, because I, I don't know that like, you'll never walk alone part, right? Which is Hebrews 13 verse 5, right? You'll never leave him or forsake him. Well, then why have you got this? And, like, there was a, a, a president, she had the whole song on there, and I uh, really got it printed out, and I'm going to really read to you what the whole song says. It says here, when you walk through a storm, hold your head up high. And don't be afraid of the dark. Ooh. David said it this way. He said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For his rod and staff, they comfort me. We know that your head goes up high, right? <laughs> At the end of a storm, there's a golden sky and the sweet silver song of a lark. Walk on through the wind. Walk on through the rain. Through, though your dreams be tossed and blown, walk on, walk on with hope in your heart and you'll never walk alone. The Liverpool edge. What a way to do life. Isaiah said this, prophesied this, and I think it's Isaiah 43. He said, when you walk through the rivers, do not be afraid. They will not sweep over you. Powerful, powerful words. The Apostle Paul said it this way. Though I am a priest down, though I'm going to get to the right words. I think it's very important. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. This really blessed me big time. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. It says it like this. Mm. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard pressed on every side but not crushed. Perplexed but not in despair. Persecuted but not abandoned. Struck down but not destroyed. Powerful, powerful truths to possess for your own life. Remember for there to be wine the grapes must be crushed. Oh, be aware, my friends. The time that we're living in, be aware of, she uh, of wolves in sheep's clothing. Yes, yeah. yeah. Discernment, discernment, discernment. You know, I made the mistake, please forgive my ignorance, but I made the mistake in my life thinking that just because someone doesn't have tattoos and not a gun in their back pocket, they're not a gangster, doesn't mean that they, that they, that they won't manipulate you. Some people there they've got some tattoos, right? Super, like truth, like truthfully kind to you. Some people know things, but yes, when you're going for a hug, there's a knife in your back. No tattoos, they don't smoke, they don't drink, they never sniff coke in your life before. But going for that hug. <laughs> Be away of wolves in sheep's clothing. Alright? Jesus warned us of this. And then lastly, manage by the grace of God your own family well. Manage it well. As we close, 
Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 to 4. Again, you're going to see the mission of this ministry right here from the Word of God. The year of the Lord's favor. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. That's not just those that are lacking finances. It's God's people to proclaim the good news to the people. To proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. To proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God. I just want to pause there. I remember years ago when we were initially by God's grace, we were just doing the, the schools. The speaking at the school. And I always had like this thing inside of me, like I knew like it's it's not just it's not just schools. Like it's people from wherever, wherever there's people that just whether it's business, whether it's rehabs, wherever. Like I knew it was just people, wherever there's groups and stuff, that's what we're gonna be talking about. But at that time it was just, you know, schools by the grace of God. But I knew it wasn't limited to that. And then God was slowly and surely but and started opening up doors like at corporates and businesses and so forth to go and speak to these people over there. And there was a time when I was thinking, yeah, that, what am I now? What am I going to tell this guy who's like a, <laughs> he's like a CEO or CFO or whatever. What am I going to tell him? And I just felt, well, the same thing you tell the kids. <laughs> because a lot of the folks that are in the corporate, they are maybe males and females, but trapped inside of them is still a young boy, 12, that needs help. I mean, I'm sh- like I, recently we received a, a, a message from a very well-known also also company and so forth. Received the me- well, actually was spoke spoke to one of the people at the company where someone like it's like a massive massive corporation where one of the senior managers, like seniors, he got caught now or she got caught now busy taking money from the company, right? And there's not the first of there's multiple cases like that. Stealing money. Where people in senior top, 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 top managers, managerial position, top. Like I'm talking like massive salary, impact, big bucks, and so forth. But there's issues in their marriages. Because they themselves, maybe perhaps, don't have a dad when they were younger, so they don't know nothing about following a child. Nothing, because the dad never went out early, whatever the case might be. Dad never showed any love towards the, his, his mom and so forth. And now, he thinks that's the same principle applies with him and his wife. But, but salary-wise, hauling, thick salary, six figures, big one, come on. Marriage falling apart. My friends, the people need help. All of us get to be a part of this great solution moving forward. Don't get out of this amount. Never, ever, ever, I've made this mistake too many times. Never allow the outward appearance of someone to fool you. Or a title. Or a title or a position to fool you. Yeah. Yeah. Man, these people crying on the inside. Sitting there, especially those that act like they don't, most of the people you specifically, those that sit there in the class and act like that, I don't care attitude. Yeah, but they listen to every word. They won't tell you, of course, but they're listening. Or oh, acting like, ah, this God, ah. Open your mouth. They sit in there, they're listening. They act like they're not listening. They're very young, they're digging in their nose. But no, they're listening. Mm-hmm. I've been so shocked in my own life, personally, when I've been sharing with groups by God's grace. And like we shared, like, I mean, this past week, over 600 speaking engagements in the past two years. It looks nothing. Disinterested, not at all interested comes afterwards requesting certain things. Wanting to know, can we have the audio? Um, blah, 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 this, 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 this. They listen, listen, when you say blah, 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 they didn't look like you were listening to anything. That's why don't let appearances ever fool you. God is doing a massive work in people's lives. This word, I don't know if you, how many of you are show of hands got the U version Bible app? Quickly, right? Show of hands, U version Bible app. This morning, the scripture on the Bible app was, uh, do not grow weary in doing good for in due season you will reap the harvest if you do not give up that was a word for someone here today don't give up harvest is close this past week also we were with a mentor and he was sharing the story of Peter and Jesus when Jesus was busy walking on the water 
And then Peter's like, Lord, if that's you, you tell me to come. And Jesus is like, come, <laughs> right? And he answers his prayer, and he says, come. And now Peter's busy walking on the water, and he says, he started looking at the winds and the waves, and he began to sink and so forth. What the mentor was mentioning was so fascinating. He said that Jesus wasn't like far down there in Peter. No, Peter was so close to the extent that all Jesus had to do was just reach out his hand. So you're that close to your breakthrough. But look at the winds and the waves right now. You're this close. And look at the winds and the waves. You're this close. And if you have looked at the winds and the waves, just know that your Savior isn't far away somewhere like Tabo had mentioned. He's right there close by. Therefore, Day, you know that verse also? Uh, this day I put before you life and death, blessing and curses. The mentor also mentioned something so powerful, I've never seen it like that before. I thought when the Bible saying that it's like a decision you make once off, right? Like choose life, like okay, I'll choose life. My friend, that is a daily decision. Daily deciding to choose life. Not a once off thing you did think, it's a daily decision that you are making. I'm choosing life. In this circumstance, in this situation, I'm choosing life. Not choosing death yet. Not choosing, I'm choosing life and the blessing of God through His promises for my life. That's what I'm choosing. Okay. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, provide the Lord's grief in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, look at what He wants to do for your life. Alright? The oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, of strong, powerful, established, cannot be shaken, cannot be uprooted. That's who we are. All right? A plan, a planting of the Lord for the display of His splendor. And then look what it says. We get healed in order to do what? To go out and rebuild the cities. We proclaim the good news. We receive the good news. So what can happen? So we can go out and receive the good news and then go out and then bring healing to our cities. Look, uh, they will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. Heal people, transform nations. Whole people transform nations. And your wholeness doesn't come from your own positive thinking. Your wholeness comes from receiving from Christ. That's where it comes from. From receiving what He has for you. Daily receiving His abundant provisions of grace. Daily asking, Father, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Spirit, Lord God, till I overflow for the nations. Fill me, God, until I overflow. Which, by the way, will be the last time we see you. Okay? Call for a time such as this. Mark 16, verses 14 and 20, the disciples commissioned. Do you realize, do you realize in royalty what, what, what a privilege it is to be commissioned? What a privilege from the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, to be commissioned and to be sent out as this diplomatic agent of change of highest rank, a voice of heaven on you. Wow. That's for all of us. Later, Jesus appeared to the 11 disciples themselves as they were reclining at the table and he called them to account for their unbelief and hardness of heart because they had not believed those who had seen him after he had risen from death verse 15 and he said to them go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation i don't know about you but if that was last maybe sitting at the table would have been a come here right Listen, Peter, my friend, was a fisherman. And here his king, who is our king, says to him, listen, this vision is not just local here. This is a global vision we're talking about. This is world invasion we're talking about here. For the kingdom of God. It's massive. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. He who has believed in me, who is Jesus, and has been baptized, me, and has been baptized, will be saved from the penalty of God's wrath and judgment. But he who has not believed will be condemned. He goes on to say, these signs will accompany those who have believed in my name, in his authority. Uh, they will cast out demons. You don't have to be afraid of the demon. You cast the thing out in Jesus' name. Okay. 
You're not afraid of the demon. You cast the thing out in the name of Jesus. You have authority through Christ to do so. Okay. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will get well. Verse 19. So then, when the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, he, has ta- he was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. I think we read very lightly over that sentence over there. That is massive. Because he's seated high above all rule, authority, dominion, power, and government. That's where he's seated right now. And by the way, according to his word, he says we are seated with him in heavenly places. Which puts us in the power position over here. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Take him to heaven, sit down at the right hand of God. Okay, watch this now. And they, they listened to him. He said, faith and belief him. They listened to what he said. And they went out and preached where? Everywhere. While the Lord was working with them and confirming the word by the signs that followed. What a powerful, powerful way to end with. He confirms it with his hand and seal over it all. That there's an impact that takes place. The people know that they encountered the living God through our lives. To think of that is just like the living creator of everything wants to actually flow through us. That wherever we go, that there's a mark that was made, there was an aroma that was released, a fragrance that was released. Why? Because the believer was there. The environment changes because the believer walked in. A believer who knows who they are in Christ Jesus walked in. It wasn't with eyes of judgment and so forth. It was eyes of deep compassion that the world is longing for. Deep compassion. His hands and his feet. And this is not something, my friend, that you conjure up on the inside of yourself. No, it's who we are. This is who we are at the end of the day. So, with that being said, we can release them to us. Thank you, Jesus. Did you guys get something here today? Yes. yes. You guys did. There was a lot of stuff that we shared. There is the audio that is available for you guys over there. You're not just doing it to look fancy, but the audio is available over there. Because you've got to listen to something at least about seven times to get everything out of it. Mm. All right, so that is available over there should you, should you want that and, and so forth. But if we can quickly close our eyes and bow our heads, thank you so, so much, and we're going to pray. <coughs> Abba Father, our Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you for what you've done here today, O Lord. You are worthy of all praise and glory and honor. And we thank you, Father. Thank you for every one of your precious children that are here today and those that have also joined online. Father, I speak to every single soul and I say, soul, arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of you, Lord, has risen upon them. Speak life over them in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you that you are the one that gives us our identity. You are the one that gives us our power and confidence and strength and purpose and destiny and authority. We thank you for it pleased you, Father, to give us the kingdom. So we thank you for it. We love you so, so much, God, and we dedicate this day and the rest of this week into your hands. Thank you that you will be established through it all. And Father, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. And we all say, Amen. 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 Amen.